Feng Chu. So welcome to this uh, session uh, today for 30 minutes on sustainable uh, and sustainability is business is the headline. Sustainability is business. I'm very excited to be with you for 30 minutes with Steve. I'm going to be introducing Steve in a minute. So I'm excited to be here for two reasons. First, sustainability is, as you've heard this morning, so core to who we are at Schneider. And I think many of us are you know, parents, you have friends, we want the planet to be sustainable, planet sustainable, uh, climate sustainable. Our businesses, we want them to be sustainable. So nobody's against the word of sustainable and sustainability. But what makes me more excited is to talk sustainability in a business leadership forum. So we're gonna talk sustainability in a context of creating value for companies, impacting the bottom line, impacting the top line, and making your offers differentiated in the market. So today the, the topic will be very much driven with a customer-centric lens, business lens, and there's no preaching today, no teaching. It's about showing, sharing, and walking the talk. I'm gonna be sharing the stage with uh, Steve. Uh, Steve will hide, uh, will come on stage in, in 10 minutes. He's leading our global practice for energy and sustainability services. He's our senior VP in charge based in the US, but his team are, are global. And that team provides consulting services uh, to customers. And I'm very proud to be uh, driving two initiatives for the company, I'm Xavier. I'm driving both the effort to design sustainable offers for our customers, to make the offers of Schneider, the products, the architecture, the software, always more sustainable. That's one. And the other thing I'm in charge of is to make Schneider for ourselves a sustainable company. So I'm in charge to work with the 200 factories, 100 distribution centers, thousands of offices to apply those technologies to ourselves. So I'll be sharing with you what we do, share with you the numbers, the savings, the improvements we make through those technologies. So the topic of sustainability usually is, is considered as something more of a boardroom thing for annual reports, brand image. That's true, that has to stay. It's the way company would go, a company like us. But today we're gonna to be focusing on how sustainability really has to form part of what we sell to customers. How the customer is benefiting? How do we quantify the benefit in terms of energy saving, the dollars, the RMBs, the money which is saved, the resilience, the cost of asset, the continuity of operation. So that's really what the customers are willing and they don't you know, get enough information reading whatever reports which may be shot at corporate level. So when, we, uh, when the 10,000s of R&D engineers of Schneider Electric do invent new offers, they, they, they apply to themselves a lens which is sustainable, a sustainable lens. And what, what we've done recently was to survey customers. We wanted to know what was important for our customers in that space, so we launched a, a, a worldwide survey to 1,500 of our customers, electricians, panel builders, specifiers, architects, OEMs, and they told us what, what were the most important elements for them to select our offers and to be able to pass them over to their own customers. Uh, five learnings from that survey. The first survey is, as you see the bars, there were 12 items of importance for them, and many of them were of an importance of 30 to 80% uh, for, for, for our own stakeholders. So they placed a high level of importance in how offers were resilient, repairable, low toxicity. low toxicity, super safe components. And then the two at the top, uh, the one at the top is very much about circularity, how the products they, we, they get from us are repairable, retrofitable. How long are they lasting? Are they connected? Can they upgrade them automatically? And we saw their expectations were all behind that domain. And three of the learnings we got were the followings. We were struck by three categories of customers. Some of you in the room may be from those categories specifiers, systems integrators, and OEMs, we're placing an importance beyond eight out of grade of 10 on those parameters.
with what we call eco-design way. And all of our products are getting through the lens of those five dimensions. I'm going to take examples of each of those five dimensions to make my talk today very pragmatic and illustrated about transparency, circularity, health and safety, resource efficiency, and differentiation. And that's an approach we've been implementing at Schneider Electric. And today, more than 75% of our product carry the logo Green Premium. You see it on our, on our products, on our packaging. There is a QR code. You see Green Premium. These are 75% of our revenue, which are made with Green Premium. So more than this introduction, I want to show concrete examples of how this thing materializes in real life. So the first at the bottom is about compliance and transparency. We have fully digitized platforms to provide to any of you 24-7 any information on our offers, but any information on those green dimensions of our offers which I've just mentioned to. We have also external and multi-vendor platforms to which we provide our information so that architects, specifiers can immediately access to any of that data. And I want to do a live demo of how is the day in the life of a salesperson in Schneider Electric. So I will illustrate with that QR code. And I would visualize, say, uh, a business partner like yourself calling some of our See what kind of product I'm going to uh, show. So this is the thesis contactor he was referring to. So he was asking, asked me two things. First, recycli recycli recyclability rate. So here you have all sort of information on this contactor with technical, electrical, mechanical information. You know, you can browse. If you want to have any information which is more environmental, you can have for all of our products a full environmental profile with how much copper, how much plastic, recycling rate, energy consumption, and time of use, all the sort of things are available to you at your fingertip. Like I'm doing, I'm live on the uh, digital uh, platform of Schneider Electric. And he was asking me about recycling rate. So end of life, use time, oh, end of life.
25th, you have all the proofs and evidence that the product is fully Ross China, Ross Europe compliant, signed by Schneider Electric with all details. Again, I send it to Jamie, and he can get all information just now. Obviously, I can call him to check whether he has all information he wants, but that's the way we can respond real time and to digitize sustainable information to our customers. So that was one of the ways to demonstrate how we try and address uh, transparency from our customers. Transparency forms also comes in, in many other ways, but this is just one of the ways in through, uh, through which it went. The second expectation from our customers is circularity. The, 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 the very vague in com concept of circular economy is, is known by many. It's about using the quantity of resource we use to be planet compatible at the global economy scale. But when we are Schneider Electric, circularity means something very practical. It's to be able to, and many of you may have seen EcoStructure Power. This is the master pack MTZ on the, on the left, which is a brand new product. Circularity means, if you look at the center, a product which can be retrofitted. So continuity of operation in, in a process industry, in an oil and gas rig. sensors, building management systems, and other systems, the energy consumption. So we are using technologies for our, own, uh, for our own benefits. That's for offices, but as I said earlier, we have 200 factories. We have 100 distribution centers and 1,300 sites worldwide for more than 5 million square meters. So the bill we pay every year is approximately 100 million euros of energy, and every year we do save 5% of that. So year on year, we save 5 million of euros of spent because of the constant adoption of those technologies, you know, systems, ecostructure power, ecostructure building. Uh, power distribution equipment for a very green building as per living building challenge uh, label, which is the more demanding uh, label for buildings. So we're able to respond to that architect with a lot of transparency on the products, on the performance, on the substances, with a lot of data. They were pleased, they eventually opted for our technologies, but that's really transparency, super compliance, which enable business for us as much as
on their own want to be these three things. They want to be profitable, they want to be competitive, and they want to be confident. And all of these three things factor into the equation of becoming a very sustainable company and conducting sustainable businesses. Because the, your companies want to be uh, cost saving, they want to sell more, they want to, you know, as far as what makes them profitable. In terms of competitive, competitiveness, they want to position their brand appropriately. So when you think about that we provide to our own company as well as other companies. And I'll give you some specific examples. But starting with overall sustainability strategy, most companies really don't have a clue where to start. So you see these objectives that a CEO will lay out and say, we want to be 20, uh, carbon reduction of 20% over the next X number of years. Or we want up for, but it still becomes regulatory compliance. Fourth, I'll touch on facilitating new energy opportunities, the NEO network, new energy opportunities, and what companies are doing to take advantage of that. Give you an example of that. Renewable energy sourcing right now. I know it might sound simple, but it's not. It's very compli complicated oftentimes, the transactions, depending on where uh, that renewable asset happens to sit, to, ex to sit or exist. Is it a direct purchase on your property? Is it a purchase power agreement that sits remotely and you have to negotiate the transmission and distribution arrangement to get it to your facility? Or just managing the volatility of the risk involved in that transaction? There's a lot that goes into that. Um, second to the bottom there, energy efficiency services. I mentioned what we do for our own facilities, but we do this for a number of other companies as well. And I'll give you a few examples of that. And then finally, water conservation and waste diversion, important to every, over every sustainability strategy. So let me just touch on a few companies and clients that we serve. Most of you, hopefully, are familiar with this name, Swire. Uh, that's a picture of Mark Watson there on the left. He's the Chief Sustainability Officer for Swire. When you think about this company, it's a very globally diverse company, okay? The brands include things like Cathay Pacific, uh, airlines. Uh, they're the largest Coca-Cola bottler in the world. A global real estate investment trust, or REIT, that owns properties everywhere. In fact, some of you may have uh, your own offices in some of their facilities. So a very diverse portfolio. Now imagine if you are Mark Watson, the chief sustainability officer, officer for Schweier, trying to figure out, one, what is my overall sustainability strategy for all of these different brands as a corporation? Because we want to do the right
take some of Brown Foreman's spirits over the next few days at this event. So a uh, maker of whiskey and bourbon. And uh, so these guys, we worked very closely with these guys on what the right overall sustainability strategy was, what their targets should be. You see uh, John Varga there on the left, he's the CEO uh, of, uh, of Brown Foreman. And Brown Foreman wanted to be very competitive and position their brand appropriately, but also drive out cost. And what he had was all kinds of data and information in different places. It would take them weeks, if not months, of EcoStructure Resource Advisor. And so they take all that data and information and they use that data to shape an overall strategy and plan. So we've literally taken that data and gone into facilities, sometimes pre-construction, like the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, where we've gone in and helped them put together an overall integrated system approach to becoming the most sustainable facility, one of the most sustainable facilities in the world. The Staples Center in Los Angeles, other facilities around the world have factored into this overall equation. Scott can go to Resource Advisor and pull up the data and information from every one of his facilities around the world at any point in time. He can see what his entire footprint is. He can structure initiatives and efforts to go after different pieces of it. He can use it to prioritize energy. portfolio companies, kind of like Swire with different uh, uh, brands with Cafe Pacific and all the different Coca-Cola bottling, all of that. Well, Don Anderson has this across Hilton Hotels as a property. He has this off of uh, performance food groups. He, he's got this across a wild, wildly different set of, of uh, ownership in all these different companies. And Don wants to know who the leaders and laggards are with respect to energy consumption.
We formed this and launched this last year in a number of different places around the world. And you can see a sampling of some of the clients that have entered into the NEO network. And think of this as a club because many people don't have visibility into what's actually happening on the renewable landscape. As a NEO member, there are three things that you get. You have the opportunity to one, discover, so you can go into the NEO network and find out what renewable projects are going on and taking place literally anywhere in the world and get access to that information. Number two, you can connect, where you get connections between different developers of these renewable sites and wind farms or solar fields, et cetera. You get connected to them with the right end user who's looking for that type of match because not all renewable projects are created equal. There's different types that may fit differently you know, for your organization. So number one is discover, number two is connect, and number three is exchange. The third piece where we help orchestrate the transaction between the consumer or, or off taker of that renewable facility and the developer and provider. And so we've seen this grow dramatically just in the last year to year and a half because what we essentially do is take the confusion out of the mess for the developer and figuring out how do I most effectively get my renewable energy what kind of solution concretely you provided to them in order to help them to reduce their energy consumption? So I, I would put them in a couple different categories. There are the categories of the products, which are building management solutions as well as low, medium voltage, that type of equipment oriented solution. But then at the service level, um, we'll work with them on oftentimes, like uh, you mentioned some, we work for all those that you mentioned. So one of their
regard uh, from an overall consumption perspective. So that's just an example, but the services are, are pretty broad in terms of what we can provide around those connected products as well as, as the services on top of them. Perfect, thank you very much, Steve. And that was the last question. I think time is up. Thank you again. Thank you very much.